What you're looking at here is some animation that's all done through CSS. There's nothing else working here. And the animation actually uh, is working from a relatively new CSS3 attribute named uh, a keyframe animation. Now, a keyframe animation allows you to do, you know, this kind of stuff. You get to uh, animate any object that's in the, in the uh, web page. And the code doing it is right here. As you see, this code defines what happens at certain time in the animation. And then later on, uh, in my, this is all my CSS, I actually define what element I want that animation to take effect on um, and some other attributes for my animation. So what we could do is let's not waste any time and we'll just jump right in. Um, let me start with a blank page. So currently, I am back to a uh, page with no ship on it. And what I want to do is animate that ship that you saw. So um, first thing I would think is let me actually pop that ship into my page. And what I'm going to do that with is the before pseudo, uh, before pseudo attribute uh, on the body. So I'm going to go body and then before and with this hook I could just do my content colon we start with the URL and I created this ship an SVG image uh, like so I saved it now when I refresh my browser there he is he appears at the top left corner um, as you could see he the ship kinda pushed my article down a little bit and that's because um, he's in the document flow now, so what I could do to get him out of it is position absolute. And uh, to make sure that he's going to be in the top left, I'm going to just do top and then left zero, like so. Uh, don't get confused that I uh, noted top and left horizontally over here. I still added the semicolon. Um, anyway, when I refresh my browser, okay, now it's kind of back in there. What I want to do at this point, too, is kind of push my article up a little bit for this animation. So uh, let me go to where I define the top margin for my article at 6, and maybe I'll pull it back to 4, and yeah, or maybe I'll push it down to 5. There we go. All right. So that looks good. So now uh, what I'm trying to get ha uh, to happen over here is have a little bit of an overlap between my uh, image and my ship because I want to affect the z-index back and forth while it's going through. Um, all right, so now we have the element that we want to animate. So the first thing we ought to do is actually, well, the first thing we have to do is kind of define this keyframe, this thing that we're going to do, this animation uh, that we're going to apply to this object. So, um, well, let's start with that. I'm going to go and actually define this animation before my body because I later on actually have to set it to happen uh, to happen to this element because if you think about it, I'm going to create an animation event and I could apply it to any um, any element that I have on my page or multiple elements on my page. So uh, that's why I'm starting the animation beforehand. So here's the syntax for that. Uh, and and right, what we're going to work with right now is just going to be browser specific to Mozilla because um, that's the only way you can get Surefire support of it. So here's how it starts. At dash moz dash key frames all right and then you're going to name your keyframe now um, you want to name your keyframe something abstract Na name the behavior not the instance that it's happening like I, I don't want to name this thing a uh, ship movement because in reality it's going to be a uh, a vertical movement or a horizontal movement that I could actually potentially reuse in other projects so let's keep it a little more neutral of the situation and I just what did I say horizontal uh, sweep and that's 
what I'll do. So I'm going to, once I name it, I put my curly braces on there, and then I could actually add stuff in the middle. Okay, so with, by this point, all we've done is we've defined, uh, we're setting up the instance. We defined a uh, horizontal sweep, but we actually haven't set any values in it, which is what I want to do now. Let's start with going 0%, and we do the curly braces here as well. Whatever we put inside of 0% represents what's going to happen at the very beginning of the animation. So, um, and we'll start with just kind of setting up the framework, 0%, and then let's do 100%. So now we, we're going to say what happens at the very beginning, and we're also going to define what happens at the very end. And probably one of the first things you could start to make sure everything is being targeted right and all that is let's just start with opacity. We're going to we're going to set this ship to just kind of fade in. Now, this is not I'm not going to use opacity at all for this. I just want to kind of make sure that I want some to start with something simple so when I apply it I see it works and then I could kind of go into detail. Um so opacity will start at 0%, so it's not so it's going to be invisible and by the end of it it should be at one. All right, perfect. Now, well, now we have nothing because if we go refresh our browser, nothing's going to happen. Well, well, of course, nothing's going to happen, right? Because we have we haven't actually uh, associated this animation with this object that we have here. So now that we have what's going to happen, let's actually apply it to our uh, element that that's going to take it and. Here's how we're going to do that. First, we have to start with the browser prefix, M-O-Z dash. And now I'll actually use the animation dash name. And this name refers to what I named it over here, because I could have multiple different animations. And this one's horizontal sweep. I'll copy that. No need to retype it since I already done it once semicolon to end it and by this point let's see make sure that everything happened Ma's animation we started from horizontal sweep Ma's keyframes it seems like let's try oh course the missing thing is that we actually have to define a duration for this thing because um, this thing may this thing may actually be working but it's just uh, uh, animation uh, just happening too quick for us to see so I'm gonna go two seconds there we go that's exactly what's happening see every time I refresh so it is working all right very good so at bare minimum, you know that you need to apply, once you've actually defined your animation, you need to apply the, the animation name and the duration to the object that's going to take the animation. 